and uh, with D Robinson now uh, D good morning and you one of the main committee organizers for the Patat Fiesta this year hi Alan uh, what is exciting and what can you tell us that you've really planned that's seriously exciting for the festival this year mm. um, Alan yeah there are a lot of events this year as they are every year and some of them repeat year after year um, because they're old favorites and they do really well and two of those are uh, the Vintage Car and uh, Bradasso Veteran Tractor and Trailer um, exhibits. Those are happening on the netball field in the morning um, of the Patak Fiat. That's on Saturday morning. It's on the Saturday morning, yeah. We've got, um, at, this, at this time, I think about 20 vintage cars, different vintage cars. Those range from MG to Triumph to Mercedes. And they go right back to the 30s and the 40s. It's really an amazing display. People come all out for Patak Fiat with their vintage cars. Well, I saw it last year in MET. I was very impressed, and I'm sure it's going to be just as good, if not better, this time. Yeah, around. it's really great. And what we do is we have competitions for them, so that they, they're sort of motivated to really spruce up their cars and clean them up and bring them out of, the, out of their uh, garages and put them on display for us. And then they form part, the major part of the parade, which goes through the village. Uh, at one o'clock. Right, and yeah. that, that of course is almost a highlight of the day, isn't it? It is, it is. And um, as part of the parade, we're hoping that the, um, we've got a couple of villagers coming to the party, making their own floats and doing interesting things. Um, so far we haven't had any confirmation, but I do know there are a few fascinating things that are going to be on the I parade. hope there will be, and I'm sure that uh, from what the buy-in to the whole festival that I've seen in Napier so far, that there must be some planning, big surprises. I think you've hit the nail on the head. I think the public, finally, we kind of, as a committee, getting through to them that they've got to buy into it, that actually the more successful Patak Fest is, the more successful we are as a village, the more your property value essentially increases. So it's all about really buying into this festival and doing your bit. Well, the tourism value as well, if you can get a few hundred or a few thousand people to come in for a weekend, Precisely. the, the value yeah. involved in that is probably very difficult to calculate, but it's fantastic. Ex exactly, indeed, yeah, would agree. And the other thing, um, Alan, we've got is open gardens. We did that last year and the year before. And we normally have two or three. This year we've got three. And we have over 100 people through each garden. It's um, a big number. It's a big number, you know, when you think about the size of the village. This year we've got a farm garden, a um, beautiful big farm garden with a very keen and very capable gardener, uh, owner gardener, um, on display for people to have a look at. Um, then we've also got an, a garden in the village which has been uh, um, designed to be an eco-friendly garden, so it's got a natural pond in it. Um, it's all been done with the uh, ecology and... In, well, the entire eco and green the theme these big, days big, is so yeah. important yeah. and so vital. I yeah. think hopefully a lot of people can come and learn from that. That's one. exactly it. In fact, it's a work in progress. And we specifically ask them to show it as a work in progress so that people can see what's actually involved in getting a garden like this on the go. Right, because I think all of us should be going in that direction yeah. with our gardens anyway. Yeah. And then the third garden is a, uh, a formal uh, garden in the village, formal country style garden. Also very yeah. interesting and yeah. uh, more traditional, more but traditional. why not? And, yeah. and having the range, I think, is what counts. Absolutely. And, and the variety. At, at Red Windmill, we've also got some great things going on. We've got um, um, the Labyrinth, of course, which is this will be the first year, the first Patak Fiesta that the Labyrinth has been open for the public to walk in. Um, it's a free Labyrinth, Seven Circuit Labyrinth, and um, anybody can walk it. And this year, uh, between Two and two thirty. You can uh, no three and three thirty. I'm sorry. You can have a free neck massage up at the um, labyrinth as well. So we've okay. got. That's an, an interesting. Yeah. Extra. You may have yeah. quite a queue for that one. <laughs> exactly. You know. <laughs> We're thinking in terms of uh, people having finished the um, the marathon or the heart or the cycling and needing a little bit of a, a chill out at the labyrinth. Right. Well, that sounds like a great idea yeah. as well. What other exciting things store? Yeah. Um, well, our vintage store at uh, Red Windmill is really doing very well. It's taken off in the last year since it's been open. And this year we are offering uh, vintage workshops, vintage clothing workshops. So that will be um, at 3 o'clock and at 3.30 at the Red Windmill. 
and it's 30 rand per person. It includes bubbly, and we're going to do some lovely little canapés as well. And we're just going to um, use a model and show people how to take basic outfits and turn them into funky vintage outfits, or how to take a vintage outfit and update that look to look more contemporary. And um, yeah, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Different, but I think lots of fun. Absolutely. And also depends how much of the bubbly goes down yeah. along the way. <laughs> <laughs> but that'll add to the fun of it, won't exactly. it? Exactly, yeah. And I think that's, yeah. again, the spirit of what the Patat Fierce is all about. Thanks, you're right, you're right, Alan, it is. Good, well, thanks very much, Dean. Thank Dee. you. <laughs>